new characters maybe there's another character here maybe there's another character there and then you sort of start to figure out where they might fit into um into the world then once you sort of get a basic outline um i can take that and fill in some of the bullet points that maybe we didn't have um but i can also go to the writer and go here are the bullet points i don't know what else happens you know here's the beginning here's the end this is what happens to happen in the middle Hey Shane. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Pretty well, good. Um, so why don't you go ahead and tell the listeners a bit about yourself? Uh, all right. Uh, my name is Shane Salk. I run a recording studio up in uh, North Hollywood, California. And one of the major things that I do is create um, what I call audio series. So they're full mm -hmm. cast, full sound effects, original musical score. Um, strictly audio things so think of uh right. you know game of thrones how epic it is well just take out mm -hmm. the visuals and it's still sort of that epic it's a very cinematic and immersive um experience awesome um so what is the show you're doing right now uh currently our current show is called carcerum that's mm -hmm. c-a-r-c-e-r-e-m and uh it's sort of a mix between game of thrones and princess bride right uh it's a, it's a comedy it's a drama there's sword fighting there's epic monsters all kinds of uh things like that to really put you in the world of of it it's it's exciting it's, i it's listened a, to a couple episodes it's it's it's, it's definitely a unique take on it i, I enjoyed it i like listening to it oh, good yeah although we try i to, find we, yeah no, I was gonna say I tend to listen to podcasts while I'm doing other work, and I find I cannot do that with that story. Or else yeah, I just either don't do any work, or I'm doing it while I'm writing or editing, and somehow I'm just starting transcribing things, and it just doesn't work out. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not one of those things that you can do with while you're vacuuming or, or something. Um, a lot of people right. that I know listen to it either in the car. We sort of designed mm -hmm. it with a commuter in mind because oh, interesting. Um, well, the average commute time is about. 15, 20 minutes. So mm -hmm. we make the episodes 20 minutes or so. Um, and you're kind of confined. You're in your car. You're doing one thing. You can listen right. and drive. It gets monotonous. Safely. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, hiking or walking your dog or something like that. But mm -hmm. it really is a an experience where you can't just sort of have it on and catch what you need to. Um, mm -hmm. And it's we try to elevate the whole medium into something that hasn't necessarily been seen or heard before um mm -hmm. in many many ways um because i think you can do all the things you do with film yeah, but no, with like just it. audio um, right and so it's been it's been fun to see how far we can push the bounds of those things now how inspired were you by like old timey radio shows i mean i, I it reminds me very much of the old ones yeah i mean i grew up listening to that stuff uh the Dragnet, Suspense, The Shadow, mm -hmm. um, Gunsmoke. Um, but I wanted to, so very, very much so. It's it's always been something <laughs> I've liked. But I wanted right. to take those old ideas and modernize mm -hmm. everything anyway. You know, mm -hmm. it's not, it's some of those old shows are ideas of sound effects. So it's, you hear a door open and close. Mm -hmm. um, you hear somebody walking. Um, the coconuts and you know sort of what's happening. Right. But the classic I, coconuts. Exactly. But I definitely wanted to, we right. we take a lot of time to go, well, what's the actual environment that we're in? Mm -hmm. What noises are going on all over the place? So we really mix it much more like a, a film. And we, I, I, when I sit down to design, it's really you close your eyes and see all the little nuances of the scenes and of the environments and try to put as much into this thing as possible to give a very full um, mm -hmm. experience to the listener. Um, now so you're, uh, yeah. you're, you're sound, you're the lead sound designer, right? Mm -hmm. On the show. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I did most of the sound design. We give it to, uh, our mixer master, Tim McEwen, who's an amazing guy. So I will put in sort of, I'll, I'll build the scenes and, and put in all these sometimes hundreds of sound effects. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, it's really good for me to give it to somebody else to go, because I'll hear all of the sound uh -huh. effects and I'll think like, oh, well, these need to be louder. This needs to be quieter. We want to make sure this is. But 
when somebody else gets a hold of it, they hear what they think should be brought out mm-hmm. and brought in and and really get all the the numbers and everything um uh fixed to to sort of put the best experience to make sure that all it mixes correctly basically you know i i spend a lot <laughs> right. of time a lot of time on uh um footsteps um, okay so a lot of times if i'm mixing it or something i'll try to get those footsteps louder which is not correct which is mm-hmm. not right but it's what i hear you know mm-hmm. it's what so you focus that's on. it's it's a lot better to get someone to who really knows how to mix really knows um how to master everything to 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 do all that and tim does an amazing job Awesome. I, I I kind of equate this as like a, I'm a novelist so that I see that as like a beta reader, like the third set of eyes that fixes all the things you messed up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure there's times where he's just like, yeah, we don't need this sound effect. What are you doing? It just cuts in. And I just don't even know. <laughs> right. I wouldn't be surprised at all, but it's, I mean, all of it's a team effort because we have, mm-hmm. uh, you know, my partner, Bill Holmes, he listens to everything. And then he's like, I don't get this or, or can we have this louder, this quieter that will argue about things and, mm-hmm. or I'll have to go back in and go, well, that clearly wasn't clear to somebody who's not seeing inside my brain. So I right. have to change the sound effects or modify and, and things like that. So it's it really is. It's a group effort. It has to be mm-hmm. because especially when you're doing audio, um, my job isn't to get you to see what I see with my design. It's mm-hmm. for you to see something in your head, right. uh, whether it's what I saw, but but. I have to be very, very specific with my design for designing what I think is happening. Um, mm-hmm. So everything is very specific. It's no, there's no like, well, you know, we'll just put in a bunch of footsteps and it'll work. Like I play out the footsteps. It's not, you know, every clinking glass is sort of in there in a specific place. It's again, not an idea of a sound design. It's actually what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, at least again in my head and if you see something different i'm totally fine with that as long as it makes sense to you Mm -hmm. um now bill is your i don't i kind of want to call him like co-creator but you and he i understand it thought out this idea together correct so we're we're business partners we own the the studio up here together and yeah we're the co-creators this thing um we I mean, it's it, this medium is something that I've been doing sort of for a very, very long time. Mm-hmm. And Bill has been in the voiceover industry for many years and, and is a producer and director and very talented. And uh, I kind of came to him with the audio idea. And he's like, well, if we can, he was like, I'll put it together. So we got some money and, and all that stuff. And then we um, I, I had the idea that I, I wanted to do a. Uh, a fantasy show and we actually have mm-hmm. two shows we were working on one's car serum this fantasy show and then another mm-hmm. one that's still being written is called hawk which is a noir show okay. so it was kind of which of these two shows are we going to do first um and car serum just kind of came around first the we had some writers weekends with some amazing writers and story story mm-hmm. artists to sort of put um the the outlines of the seasons together so there there are a lot of people that um that that contribute to the creation of but bill and i are definitely the creators who put it all together um and uh, especially over the pandemic because it was just two guys in a cave basically putting this (laughs) this i can imagine the pandemic changed everybody's lives yes very much so how did um how did the pandemic affect this? I noticed your website said that this has been in full production since 2018. So uh, 2018 was when we had our first writers sort mm-hmm. of sit down, um, and we we got uh, it was me and Bill and then Jojo Hendrickson, who's one of the the head writers who who sort of mm-hmm. uh, ran the weekends. And then Aaron Castellan, Laura Davey, um, are our two other writers, and then and then uh, Luke McKinley and uh, George Ackles were also there, um, and all of us really just came up and we started brainstorming. Of I, I had an idea of the world I wanted and, and rules and and the the mm-hmm. general theory, but really putting the the elements together of this whole world we were building. Then right, because this was brand new. You had to start from scratch, basically. Exactly. You come up with the rules of the world. What 
uh, especially in a mm -hmm. fantasy world. It's not necessarily mm -hmm. everything that we live in. Right. Um, you have to come so, up with a map and a magic rule set. Exactly. There's a lot of rules that we came up with. Um, and one of the exciting things for me was we could socially, we could take elements that we liked and discard elements we don't like from our our world. So for mm -hmm. example, um, I, you know, came in with it going, okay, great. Well, you know, our, um, we decided our lead was going to be a female. Um, and 99% of the, the characters we didn't write as male or female. We just mm -hmm. kind of wrote them and then cast right. them based on that. Uh, but we, we had sort of come up with, with this, you know, because of the actress that we wanted to work with, who was Dana powers, um, who's amazing. Um, but uh oh yeah so we i you know i came up with this idea you know there is no the racism and sexism of the way that we understand them in our world mm -hmm. don't, don't exist it's not you know we never go oh you can't do that you're a girl things like that it's mm -hmm. not it's not a story about a, a woman overcoming overcoming being a woman it's the story of these relationships and actors racism is the same way there are mm -hmm. things in these worlds where people are scared of things that are different but we'd get to decide what's up so we did we did those weekends we wrote outlines um i filled out you know even more bullet points we give we give those bullet points to different writers to get different feels of different characters and and then put them all together and so that whole process had been going on since 2018 mm -hmm. we started actual recording production in 2020 basically and then okay. a pandemic happened. <laughs> I was just kind of <laughs> mentally doing the math. There's like, oh, wait, that sounds like pandemic year. Yeah. So well, we it took about a year because, you know, I was going back and forth between New York. People have jobs. Um, mm -hmm. I was trying to find funding and and I mean, and yeah, all of these yeah, things. It, it was and, and I didn't want to just, you know, beg, steal, borrow, barter. We wanted mm -hmm. to pay people. We we wanted to do things right. And um, in 2019, I moved back out to Los Angeles from New York and we took over this recording studio. So we were making that run as a business at the same time. Uh -huh. So there was a lot of things up in the air and happening at the same time. And uh, I mean, this studio was less than a year old when the pandemic hit. So again, everything changed. We had to do remote recordings. We had to keep as many people safe as possible. Mm -hmm. um, I was basically corn. I was, I lived by, I lived by myself, but Bill had his family and, uh, here and, and he's, he's older and his kids are, are my age. And so I quarantined with them basically. Um, <laughs> so for, put for a trial a to time, that business. It really was just, yeah, it was me and Bill and, uh, Dave Volpe, who does our music and Tim McEwen. Um, I set up these systems where all of this stuff could happen remotely. So we could do mix meetings and we could do all this other stuff. That's good. Remotely. That's how you survive. Yeah. And, uh, and we did, We're, we, we survived, which is great. I mean, we, you know, we say that we're some of the luckiest people in the world because we were able to adapt and, and it all worked mm -hmm. out so far. Yeah. Luckily you were doing audio only. Right. You didn't yeah. have to worry about in-person stuff. Exactly. And and when you're doing audio, you get one person in a booth by themselves and then mm -hmm. everybody else, you know, the engineer is in a whole separate room. Um, but then there are all these remote recordings that we can do. And so a lot of people recorded from their houses if they have the right equipment and, and the right mm -hmm. sound and stuff like that. And we were able to, again, sort of just convert to what we needed to do. It was a lot. <laughs> it sounds like a lot. Um, tell me about these writer weekends. I mean, how far um, how far have you written? Like, how yeah. far have you plotted out? Um, like, do you know the end, or are you just kind of making that part up as you write the seasons? Uh, I have I have like a very end of everything, um, sort of where we we want it all to to okay. go. But I will say that could change. <laughs> I have no, I have no, um, in my opinion, it usually does. <laughs> exactly. Um, for the writer's weekends, we, you know, our first day we really built out this world and mm -hmm. I told people how, you know, what kind of feeling of the show I wanted to get mm -hmm. and, and all these things. Um, and then we really, I love a writer's room. Um, 
because I love hearing all these different ideas and good ones, bad ones, whatever. And then you it's just really write it nice down. It's and, not your own stuff. Like you just, there's so many things you don't think of. And how many times I can go, is this a good idea? And say something and someone goes, no, that's not. I'm like, great. Mm -hmm. I just needed to think right. it out. And they're fun. I mean, I love working with a group. Um, so, it, and, and coming from so many different walks of life, uh, some people were very into fantasy. Some had never really written in fantasy. All of them were are amazing writers and storytellers. Um, but it, it, it's, so we, we sit there and we think of like, okay, so, well, here's the overall arc of the story. We start here, we end here. Mm -hmm. Um, this is maybe something that happens in the middle. And then you sort of start doing episode by episode and go, well, who are these new characters? Maybe there's another character here. Maybe there's another character mm -hmm. there. And then you sort of start to figure out where they might fit into, okay. um, into the world. Then once you sort of get a basic outline, um, I can take that and fill in some of the bullet points that maybe we didn't have. Mm -hmm. um, but I can also go to the writer and go, here are the bullet points. I don't know what else happens. You know, here's the beginning. Here's the end. This is right. what happens to happen. These in the are middle. the points you need to hit. <laughs> Help but me fill it in. Make, yeah, make up characters. Make up. I don't care if we make up locations. Do whatever. It's mm -hmm. it's a lot of it's very freeing because it's like I, I need you to hit these points. I need you to start here and stop here because the next episode mm -hmm. is going to do these things. Um, but once we did that, I would take them all. And so I would we'd fill out after the writer's weekend, after we sort of had this whole thing outlined i would take that write it down fill out some more bullet points especially if it's like well later on in episode 20 we talk mm -hmm. we we want this thing to happen and i'm like oh we can precursor that in episode four so we do right. that then i give those bullet points to different writers mm -hmm. um and then i'll take what they wrote and either change it make it fit in the same voice um or add things that some other again i there all, the mm -hmm. whole time i would get to episode 28 and somebody would have written something and i'm like oh that's great well uh, let me write something in episode four that that really right. relates to that um let me drop and, a hint for this before exactly and i had i had the most experience writing for for audio so a lot of times mm -hmm. i would um expand the the action scenes or mm -hmm. things like that because or or use a device that wouldn't necessarily somebody might think of um mm -hmm. in audio so i always tell people to write it as film i say write me a film you have more experience or you know it's easier to necessarily write for a film because you can see it you can see your mind's right. eye and you're like oh here's the shots and whatever for novels it's the same way where you have that description and stuff mm -hmm. um but um it doesn't necessarily click right away. If you're thinking about audio, you think you have to add these descriptive words. You think you have right. to add a, an action and how this works and how that works or, mm -hmm. well, it's daytime, like things like that. And I'm like, no, we don't need to. So I'll take some of that stuff out, add more, more action stuff just because I'm like, well, let's see if we can do it. It's going to be fun. Right. Um, and then George Ackles would get it and he would go over and he would add a lot of description for, for the actors and, and, uh, and stuff. And then I would get it again and then I would go to Jojo. So we had a lot of eyes on it just to sort of make sense that the story was going through because mm -hmm. for Makes me, sense. I was so close to it that you need to hand it to somebody who's like, exactly. yeah, I didn't know anything and I understand mm -hmm. it or yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's always helpful. Right. Um, what are those some of the challenges doing audio like the one that immediately comes to my mind is like exposition like in like in a written story you have and even like i guess in a visual like in a movie you have a lot of leeway with exposition how do you handle things like that in audio um i so one of my biggest pet peeves with with audio in general when people mm -hmm. produce different things is people talking unlike they talk in daily life yes uh-huh so I that's my pet peeve in any kind of story written yeah. visual whatever so you know there are people that go well I'm just gonna open the green door and leave and I'm like <laughs> frankly we all know what a door sounds like why does it mm -hmm. matter that it's green right. things like that so um there's I try to remove as much of it as possible um when when you don't you make sure people are talking to each other in a way that they would talk to them mm -hmm. each other in a 
normal daily life. You get out right. that kind of exposition that way. Um, because I noticed the story, I mean, you deal, you're you dealing with like the chosen one trope. So it feels like you have a lot of things you need to explain at some point. Yeah. Um, and and the, we, we sort of throw out a lot in that first episode. And mm-hmm. one of the things that we wanted to really do with, I don't know how far you've gotten, but one of the things we wanted to do with I'm the story was- I'm only partway through the, the first season there. Okay. Uh, we, we tried to kind of screw with your mind when it comes to tropes. So mm-hmm. we 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 try to start with everything you're like, oh, it's the trope of this. And then we try okay. to turn it on its head and go, yeah, it's not what you think it was. Um, uh, you know, we try to do that sort of right off the bat. It's funny because I'll have people go call your write reviews or something and say, like, I listened to the first episode. It's so stereotypical. It's all these things, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> of course, this is what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And then they'll, after they'll listen to the second episode and they'll go, OK. Um, what? <laughs> and that's sort of the idea. Mm-hmm. Or I had one person get really upset at the first episode because it was so many tropes. And then they got upset with the second episode because it didn't follow the tropes. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay, what, whatever makes you happy. Right. Um, they're like, well, I see what you're trying to do, but that's just terrible. And I'm like, yeah, it's not what you expected. <laughs> um, yeah. It's the internet. But not everybody's going to like oh, everything. The internet. Have you been on that thing? It is. <laughs> it's mean. brutal. Um, but yeah, there. We also created it so you know your your main our main characters kind of haven't don't have a whole lot of experience out in the world that they're going mm-hmm. to see. So we have characters that are learning along with the audience. Mm-hmm. So. Anything that the audience sort of needs to know, that character needs to know as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so it gives us a, a a way to explain something um, without it seeming like we're just trying to explain it to the audience. So, mm-hmm. that, and we have a number of characters like that for different sects of the mm-hmm. culture and the, and the world. Um, and and again, it it a lot of it comes down to. Uh, realizing what the audience needs to know for the story and what you just kind of want the audience to know because you're telling us your story. And Mm -hmm. if it's just something the audience that you're like, Oh, it'd be really cool if the audience got this thing because we had, we thought of this, but it doesn't really matter to the story. We can be a lot more subtle about it. We don't have to spell it out for anybody. Because it's sort of an ego-based uh, writing where it's like, I want you to see how smart we are as writers. Right. But if it's that's, not that... That's I'd... a pitfall sometimes. Exactly. Absolutely. A hundred percent. So I try to remove a lot of that stuff when it comes to the um, the exposition. Mm-hmm. Um, so we try to do it as little as possible, but it, but it gives us opportunities, especially with new characters and and new places and locations where they some some characters like I don't know what's going on. And somebody goes, "Well, this is what's going on." And they're like, "Oh, it's always nice to have that character to explain things for you." Exactly, a exactly. useful device. Okay. <laughs> um. Oh, I had a question that it completely it, like it flew my mind. I just I started laughing about that and then just whoosh, went away. <laughs> <laughs> I have that effect on people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember. Um. Yeah. I thought I knew this when we when I first started listening to the podcast, but now I'm not so sure. Would you say this story is more character driven or do you think it's more plot driven? All right, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, I would say it's probably more character driven. Um, mm-hmm. It's I, and that's kind of how I like doing things. It's it's really all about the relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have like an overall plot, but every sort of every single thing that happens is because almost is because of another character it's the relationship somebody has with um uh with somebody or or somebody they discover that Mm -hmm. keeps them moving it's not like lord of the rings i'd say is very plot driven right Um, i think that in my mind that for me at least that's always the classic example that you could replace those with anybody and the story still goes on absolutely um for us uh it would be i feel like you'd be remiss to say from episode you know one or five where it's going to end Mm -hmm. you know mash the tv show you knew it was going to end when the war was over 
mm-hmm. you know, Lord of the Rings was either going to end with the ring being destroyed or falling into the wrong hands. You know, mm-hmm. there's are only two options um, for for this. I think it really comes more down to to the relationships of the characters. And at any time, a character could, could say, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. And the audience would be like, OK, I guess that's not happening anymore. Um, that's just that's my nice opinion, that you though. in that flexibility. Yeah, uh, I, I just I, I think story and character, re- I think relationships are the core to really any great writing Mm -hmm. in my opinion i i agree i think i'm of the same mindset yeah yeah i think it's the relationships between anybody and you can write in any genre as long as you kind of have that it's and i think you know there are people that don't like fantasy that love this show because it's not really fantasy it's about the relationships right um i would say the same thing you know uh for I, I've I've done other shows and one about zombies and and they were thinking people are like I hate zombies but I like the show that's because we designed it very ca- carefully because okay. of the relationships between people right you know the Matrix I'm not a huge fan of sci-fi I mean mm-hmm. I like it but the first Matrix I kind of forgot was sci-fi because of of it's this character going through mm-hmm. this new thing and the relationships with himself and these people yeah. in the world um although i do enjoy a good blow everything up nobody cares why movie <laughs> <laughs> right um and I, you've kind of built that in for you not blow everything else up but i was thinking you kind of built that in for yourself because you have these two um yeah. starting young characters and you did say like they're they're naive so you get the, the audience gets experience grow through them as well as the story continues right yeah and the horse and, and the horse that that horse is a I, I love the horse and it's so fun <laughs> because i've always wanted to have a mute character and i've had arguments mm-hmm. with people about you can't have a mute character in in an audio and i'm like yes you can and that <laughs> horse like, but why not talk. it'd be so much fun to play with the horse doesn't talk the horse is mm-hmm. ostensibly mute um and if somebody says well you know they communicate I go, yeah what do you think a mute person does <laughs> You think they just sit on a couch all day? No, that's that's your your the lack of imagination or brain power to go, well, how does something in a different world communicate mm-hmm. without the verbal blah blah blah. Your cat will tell you when they're hungry or mm-hmm. upset and they've never said a thing. <laughs> right. They just knocked your mouse off the desk. Exactly. <laughs> um so where do you where do you want this story to go like what what's your end goal? i'm not asking you to give away the, the plot but like uh, right like s- the story wise and the audience how do you how do you want this to play out what's your ideal end goal um i mean i definitely want the story to grow we've been starting writing season two um mm-hmm. it takes a lot um of time of money of energy all of these things to put this thing together so we're still working on that as well but the more people that listen, the the uh, easier it's going to be to keep doing mm-hmm. these things. Um, ultimately, I'd love to continue doing more seasons of this. Um, and I would l- I believe that there are some people that write a book or a, a, a comic or make an audio series with the intent of turning it into another medium. OK. And I think that. I think that the the pitfall that can befell people um, is that you don't make it the first thing a standalone where it's like mm-hmm. this is good in itself. If this right. went nowhere, this is still a amazing mm-hmm. piece of art that transcends blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Um, Harry Potter is a great example. You know, she wrote the books and you didn't need to make a movie out of it. They did. And that's right. a whole other thing, but you didn't need to. And most books are that way, I would say. Um, but I I like the idea of, of taking these stories and this um, medium and, and these things and transcending to um, like animation, literally taking the sound design, taking the animation, make spinoff novels and, and all those things. I love the world building of that. Um, 
but I don't want to I don't want to let up on the audio. I don't I, I like this audio storytelling that people are enjoying as well. So I'd like Excellent. it to grow ultimately. <laughs> yeah, I always um, I've always wondered things like that, like how like did you do you plan? I don't know. Just it's I always want to pick people's brains about how they're plotting out their stories. You should like, start a podcast. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> ideal um <laughs> um yeah it's just so interesting especially um thinking about how someone else views their story's growth you know like yeah. what their their plans for the future are it's just i i don't know it's always an interesting thing to talk to people about it's it's hard because i i do think ahead i do think mm -hmm. of well this and that and this would be really cool in a comic or this would be really cool and as a cosplay or anything right. like that also remaining true to yeah. this audio and going but if it doesn't make sense for this audio right now mm -hmm. then it doesn't matter right um, because if you're not making a good enough product for what you're doing now then how is it ever going to transpire to anything else i mean you have to make absolutely. it the best it can be now and if it goes somewhere else then awesome it has another life but yeah and and we've had people come in and, and record things that they're like, oh, we're doing this because we we're going to sell it as a TV show or something like that. And I'm like, right. Great. That's your thing. You had mm -hmm. six episodes and you have those contacts or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's not that's not the world that we're that I'm, you know, living in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if it transcends, it's because. I want it, you know, people were like, this right, was really good. What right. else can we do? With someone it? else outside thinks it'd be, so, it'd be great doing something else. Yeah. And they have the push to do that. Um, <laughs> so what do you want your audience to get out of this? Like, what do you, what are you hoping the average listener gets out of the story? I mean, I honestly, I hope that there, there are like, you know, societal messages in it always mm -hmm. and everything, but. Right. There is everywhere um, all the time. Yeah. Um, but I hope that they enjoy it. I think it's one of those things where after you listen to the first episode, second episode, sometimes you have to re-listen to them because you're sort of retraining mm -hmm. your mind on how to listen to this thing or how to experience mm -hmm. this medium because you're, we're not used to it at all. Um, and I tell people don't like, try to focus on each individual sound effects, sort of just let it happen to you and see what you get out of it. Um, mm -hmm. turn off the lights, line your bed, whatever you want to do. But, um, I hope that I hope that people start to realize that there is a huge um, that that you can do things with these this medium that it's not a novelty it's not a just a stepping stone to something else that right. we can do amazing things with audio I mean I work with the American Council of the Blind um, some and they're in love with this stuff because it's literally entertainment that's not that's not a uh, converted for their needs it's made mm -hmm. for them and whether you're sighted or not um you have this same experience which is you hear these things and then your own brain shoots the movie um mm -hmm. and i and i want people to realize that their their imagination is so much more powerful than they think it is mm -hmm. um and and i i don't want you know i hope people share it and, and realize what is what is possible in in this medium and i think that's i think it's an exciting time because we got to try things that we're like we have no idea if we're going to be able to pull this off or if this right. is going to work and uh and it does that's kind of an interesting point about using their imagination to I don't know, make the movie of your story in their head because i feel like as someone who works with written words i mean i'm I don't know I'm familiar with that. Like you, you try to let things play out the way they need to, but you try not to give too much description because that's just right. to read and you're relying on the reader to just use their imagination and fill in the blanks. Right. I mean, I can, I can put in a bunch of sound effects to in a bar mm -hmm. um, and sort of, ex, you know, sort of give an idea of how many people are in the bar, how big the bar is, how crowded it is, the kind of people in the bar from the mm -hmm. background yelling and all this stuff. But ultimately, you're the one that tells yourself, you know, what's the bar made out of? Right. What color is it? What shapes are the tables? Like all of that stuff that you imagine that you may go, oh, yeah, no, well, obviously, this is the bar. Mm -hmm. 
you know, the, the same thing that you can do in, in a few sentences, um, I can do in, in a few moments with, with Some just audio. that sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, it's, it's giving the idea of, I, again, have a very clear idea of what this bar looks like, but if you see mm -hmm. different, you're not wrong. Right. How long does it take you to, I, you said, or at least I'm gathering that you wrote the entire first season together. I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, how long does it take you to produce a single yeah, episode or are you so just doing this in batches and it's too hard to tell? Uh, so the way we did this was we wrote the whole season. Mm -hmm. Then we started recording and we don't record. We record actors individually pretty much. Okay. Um, so are they so, then reading the whole season and then you're piecing, uh, piecing it together? Kinda, yeah. I mean, they come in and we. So for Aura, um, we have her come in and and we go, you know, episode by episode as long as it takes. I mean, mm -hmm. we had her come in a lot because she's in more than uh, you know a few right. parts. Um, and we direct, and we're saying, well, this is what's happening, and we get a couple different things because we don't necessarily know what the other actor is going to do mm -hmm. or how we're going to get that. Um, okay. So then, once we get everything recorded for an episode i start editing and designing at the same time we're still recording other actors for all of the the other episodes so it's sort of actor by actor mm -hmm. um and once i get everything um recorded it can take i mean on, a, on an easier episode it'll take me mm -hmm. four hours five hours okay and some That's of a the lot less ones. than i was imagining for an easy i'm talking episode. the easiest episode <laughs> um and that's after I, you know, put all the, we, we pull out all the takes that we like and put all the lines together. And then mm -hmm. I start designing the sound. Okay. If there's very little that's happening, um, it's easier. But then some of the other ones, I mean, from four hours or six hours to four, five, six days, um, it can, and then I give it okay. to Tim, the mixer, and he, it, he can do it in a day if we're lucky, because mm -hmm. there's a lot to do. Right. Um, and then we we give notes on that. We go over that a bunch. And then once it's ready, we send it to Dave, who does the music. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of step aside and Bill sort of takes over and is like, OK, well, here's the music. Okay. This is what we want to do, you know, louder, quieter, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. And then we give it back to Tim and he mixes it again. And <laughs> so it, it can, a long it can time be a lot. Your yeah, <laughs> it can be a lot. It can be quite a lot. Uh, now, where can listeners uh, connect with you and where can they listen to the, I don't want to call it a podcast, where can they listen to the audio play? I don't know. Where I can call they do it that? An audio, I call it an audio <laughs> series, mostly because okay. if you call it an audio drama, people think of the old time stuff. Right. An audio series, they at least yeah. go, yeah, they at least go, what's an audio series? Mm -hmm. And then we can that, go that's a, it. That's a good thing to call it. Yeah. I was like, I don't yeah. know. It's technically a podcast because that's what the like the the medium what, is, but that yeah. doesn't explain what's inside it. Yeah, I don't say podcast because most people are like, oh, so you're like a couple people in a basement talking to right. microphones. I'm like, nah, mm -hmm. no, I'm much Not more quite. tired. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, carcerum the series dot com. Mm -hmm. It's C A R C E R E M the series dot com. You can mm -hmm. as our whole website. You can see our giant cast with Jane Lynch, Neil Flynn. Uh, Bob Bergen, um, Cameron Crowe, directors in it. Um, so you can see all the cast uh, as well as some behind the scenes videos and stuff or listen to it. Or you can find on any podcasting platform that you like uh, if you just type in Car Serum. Um, and then on any social media, we're just at Car Serum the series. We try to make it nice. very easy for people. Yes. And then if you send a message or a note, you can send it any of those places and I'll get it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for stopping by and talking with me today. Absolutely. I had a great time. Thank you. The Read and Write podcast is edited and produced by Deborah Zebar. Music was provided by Lo-Fi Girl and can be found at lofigirl.com or on their YouTube channel. Audio effects were created by Red Octopus and Black River Phonogram. Show notes and previous episodes can be found at readandwritepodcast.com. Thank you.